Hey folks, Aaron here. Welcome back to the Anime Review. Today we are looking at My Hero Academia Season 3, Episode 10. Oh my god. Wow. I love this episode. Holy crap. I, you know, I was half, like I want to say half asleep at one point today because, you know, obviously work and I was just getting kind of drained at that point. But, um, you know, for, for you guys know that the reason why I don't do My Hero Academia reviews early in the morning anymore is because I work from 4 o'clock in the morning to 12.30 in the afternoon. So, you know, it's kind of impossible to do a review when I'm at work, obviously. Um, you know, w unfortunately, that's probably going to be the same thing as, like, probably for the next coming, I don't know what, maybe like several months, because I don't, I don't change my bid until, I think, early September or mid-September. Uh, so, yeah, you know, reviews on Saturday, well, reviews on any day that, that come out early in the morning, I can't do. It's bottom line to it. Um, but, you know, my hero, I wasn't going to review anymore, only for the sheer fact that as much as I love the show, and it's one of the few shows that I kept with constantly, like, I watch this every Saturday no matter what. Um, the thing was, was that I was very far behind in reviews for it, so I really didn't want to go and start doing reviews again for it, uh, because I wasn't sure how they would do. But, I don't care, because this week's episode legit needs to be talked about. We need to talk about this. This ha needs to be discussed. It needs to happen. The freaking battle between All Might and All For One is just so freaking cool you know that whole sequence was amazing you know I felt so bad for you know uh, Deku and his friends who had to watch helplessly as they tried to devise this plan of taking down you know uh, at least not taking down but more so just saving Bakugo who appeared in the area you know because of uh, all, all for one and the thing is, is that, you know, they, that they can't fight. It's against the law for them to fight, technically, outside of school or outside of a certain crisis that lets them fight. And, you know, they wanted to adhere to that. They want to make sure that they're all safe and stuff. And, and Idiot was really fast to stop Deku from going on and trying to, like, rescue uh, uh, Bakugo as soon as he saw him. Because, you know, Deku, of course, obviously wants to save Bakugo. That's his, that's his friend. Regardless of the, the way he treats him and the way that I can't stand Bakugo for the most part... He still wanted to, you know, he wanted to protect them, and that's still his childhood friend no matter what. Um, but what really took the center stage of this week's episode was definitely the fight between All For One, like I said, and All, All Might, where they duked it out, and it wasn't like a grandiose fight, don't get me wrong, it wasn't something like, oh man, All, you know, All For One, you know, did some amazingly cool stuff. I mean, his, his power is OP. He's very similar to All Might in that sense because he can just change his power based off of him absorbing other people's powers and then using them via you know like a forced activation and that's pretty cool in its own right but the thing was is that everyone was kind of reserved today because of the fact that how the fight was going on they were trying to keep certain people out of you know harm's way for example um Todoroki or not Todoroki excuse me no it was um I forget what the dude's name is it Todoroki it might be Todoroki uh but you know he, he's listening to, to all for one you know try to fight all might but he also realizes that he's trying to keep him safe from you know getting hit by the feedback equally all Might's trying to keep Bakugo safe from getting hit and, you know, getting too devastated from his own strength. And also, on top of all of this, All Might definitely was, it was showing some effects of being weakened because he couldn't fight at 100%. You, that was clear as day. The fact that he was bleeding out of his mouth already in, in probably the very apex of the battle itself and the fact that he just looked like he was worn out pretty fast. It goes to show you All Might is definitely getting to a point where he's very weak. Now, I do know some things for the manga. I'm not going to say certain things. I'm just going to stay quiet about them. Um, so I, I know where this is leading per se. Um, you know, it's not that I'm caught up with the manga. It's just a lot of stuff spoiled. You know, the, the world of people that read the manga. I had um, one of my friends who reads the manga at work was telling me, oh man, it, it reminded me of the scene. And I'm like, oh dude, you just spoiled this huge chunk of the story. So I, I, had a, I went and read some of the manga um, and I, I didn't really catch up with it more so. I just, I read to that one part that he was talking about because I just want to see it unfold for myself. And yeah, it's interesting. Um, like, I said, like I said, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna spoil it, obviously. And even if you inter you know, you try to guess it down below, I'm not gonna tell you if you're right or wrong. Um, but it, it just it leads to this thing where you're starting to see it with without even really being spoiled. You're starting to see All Might get weaker as time goes by. He's not able to use his strength at full capacity anymore. And even from the fact that he went full on Detroit Smash on all, all you know all for one, it wasn't enough to stop this dude. He just knocked him to the ground. That's that's kind of scary in its own right, you know. The, the the hero, the one that is supposed to be the reigning hero of like everything, is getting to a point where his power is dwindling, and it's clear as day. 
Um, but you know, what's cool was you know Deku and his gang basically saved Bakugo at one point, and it, you know that whole sequence was really cool. How Deku was like, "Listen, we can't save you. Like he doesn't want me saving you." But he he had Kirishima. I think what's his, is that Kirishima? I think it is the guy with the hardened ability. Had him go and save him because they had a camaraderie. I'm like, really? Was that were they really friends? And, and then all of a sudden they're smiling at one of them. I'm like, mm, okay, okay, I guess I guess they're friends. Sure, why not? Um, I guess because maybe they just they have this rivalry between one another and more so than anything else. I think an understanding of one another, maybe that's that's probably the best way I could put it. But it, it was interesting to say the least. And then the fact that we get the very ending sequence where we see um, All Might's original hero, you know, the the one that gave him the power, you know, that passed down the quirk to him. And I I know already where this is going with this her it, her character. It is very unique. I think it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to them explaining it a little more. I'm hoping next week will be like a re like not only recap. Um, I almost said recap. Like who'd want to recap? I hope it's like a flashback of the past. I think that'd be a perfect way to do an episode of it. Like after hearing about her, I hope that happens. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, what did you guys think about this amazing episode of My Hero Academia? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. As always, um, in terms of other reviews today, I probably won't do any other reviews today, only because I'm. You know, kind of out of it. I'm tired. The, the biggest problem with working at, at four o'clock in the morning is that when you get when you get home, you have the whole day ahead of you. Yes, and you're thinking, "Oh man, I can go now one o'clock all the way to two o'clock the next morning." No, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You know, it, it's where I have enough energy either to stay awake for a couple hours and then pass out for a little bit, or I try to push myself to six o'clock, seven o'clock, and then go to sleep there, so I get like six or seven hours of sleep, which by the way has very rarely happened. Um, but it's just, it's hard. So it's like, I'm trying to figure out a way of keeping myself awake and also taking a nap to keep myself, you know, completely from just losing all my time awake. Um, because it so sometimes feels like that, to be honest with you. It's, it's tough. So morning shift, you know, for people that might work it, I understand your pain. Um, and also for people who think that's the greatest thing in the world is to work on a morning shift, it's a mixed bag. It's definitely depending on how you are. Like, I'm fine for the most part in terms of energy during the day. Like, Four o'clock to to twelve thirty. I'm I'm awake. I'm not tired or like, oh god, I can't. No, I, I work very well because that's the time I'm usually up to anyways for the most part. But you know, just to stay awake after the fact, a little harder. Anyways, though, besides that, I will talk to you guys later. Um, I should have a review out probably this week of something. Um, I want to say pro. Oh, tomorrow I'll have an episode of review for Full the Coolie out episode two. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you all. Have a great day, everyone. Bye bye.